Find the polar moment of inertia J and the moments of inertia Ix and Iy for the ring. You have already got polar moments of inertia and radius is given. So the first thing you want to think of is I'm going to need some polar coordinates. The next thing you have to decide is whether you're going to integrate dr or d theta. Are you going to take sort of a wedge or are you going to integrate out circles? Well, remember that j is what the first thing we're looking for is the integral of r squared dA. It doesn't make much sense to integrate r squared with respect to theta. So we're going to look at r, dr. If we look at what the differential element would be dr, you're going to be looking at differential three-quarter circles. A differential three-quarter circle is so thin that it has the same area as a rectangle that's been bent around. So I can take the circumference circumference of a circle would be 2 pi r, and I'm only going 3 quarters of the way around. That will be the thickness of my rectangle that I've bent. This gives me 3 halves pi times r dr. That's my dA. So I've got my circumference times the thickness dr. That gives me dA. Now I can integrate that. dA is the integral from r1 to r2 of r squared, 3 halves pi r dr which, if you evaluate the integral, gives you r to the fourth over 4 from r2 and r1. j is 3 eighths of pi times r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. Now that part is relatively straightforward. What gets to be interesting is when you start asking what the moments of inertia are. Remember that the moment of inertia, ix, is the integral of y squared dA, and iy is the integral of x squared dA. Neither of those is going to be easy to calculate with an integral. You can try to figure out what x and y are in terms of r and theta, and it'll work, but there's an easier way. We want to recall that j is ix plus iy. So whatever our answer is, it's got to add up to the j we just found. That was our first answer. Notice what's going on with this figure, though. I mean, if you reflect this about the 45-degree line, so fold it over on top of each itself, or alternately, if you rotate it 90 degrees and then flip it about the vertical, you're going to get the same figure in either way. The other thing you want to remember is that if you have a semicircle on this side of the 40 of a, the vertical or a semicircle on that side of the vertical, I is going to be the same because of the square in your integral. It doesn't matter how far off the axis your mass is. The question is how much of your mass is off the axis. So by these noticings, by, the, by these things that you want to note, we can say Ix has to be equal to Iy because this figure is, so, is symmetric about that 45 degree line. Once you do that, you can just say that each of them has to be half of j. Ix equals Iy equals 3 sixteenths of pi r2 squared uh, to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth.